Um, actually, I'm uh, from a solid state background, but the recent development in quantum computing is really exciting, not only for condensed matter theorists. I also tried to like, make some connection to some of the lattice gauge theory that recently uh, synthetic quantum matter can make some uh, interesting um, uh, like uh, 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 real-time evolution uh, study for this uh, strongly interacting system. So uh, my name is Yi Ping Huang. So uh, uh, previously I, I'm, I was in uh, Max Planck Institute as a postdoc. Now I um, moved to Porsche Institute. And uh, today I'm going to introduce um, those uh, concepts that uh, actually uh, emerges uh, from uh, uh, frustrating magnetism and also high energy physics. And hope, uh, hopefully that uh, some of you will feel interested about that. Okay, so uh, here's today's outline. So first is that um, from a condensed matter point of view, we want to study uh, different phases of matter, especially quantum phase of matter. And recently, people start to realize that entanglement plays an important role in the study. So I'll try to like first br uh, briefly introduce the history, like how people study uh, uh, different phases of matter and why entanglement now become an important, uh, plays an important role in this study. And the second thing is that I hope that um, I will try to uh, introduce a special model. And in this model that, uh, in principle, you can see how the gauge symmetry can emerge from a system with lower symmetry, for example, in solid state system. And uh, from that perspective, it's kind of interesting that um, in this kind of system, uh, it can actually have some uh, uh, low energy effective theory description that's kind of connected to our understanding of fund fundamental forces. And it turns out that this uh, description, basically the gauge theory is also strongly related to uh, effective theory, theory description of entanglements of in the many body system. And the last is like, I, uh, I hope that after this talk, I can convince you that um, quantum simulator actually now is re uh, getting more and more important, uh, not only in the study of condensed matter physics, but also uh, for some studies uh, that related to high energy physics. And why now, and what's the advantage of that? It's basically, um, uh, I think in the quantum simulator, most of the, uh, the microscopic degrees of freedom that we are using, for example, uh, electrons or spins, or like uh, uh, neutral atoms are really well understood. And that is very different with uh, high, uh, usual high energy physics where we don't know very well about what is the uh, 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 very end microscopic degrees of freedom. So that kind of gives us the advantage that we can uh, manipulate those uh, low energy degrees of freedom and see uh, what kind of outcome that, can, uh, that this kind of manipulation can give us for the uh, effective theory. So give us a, a better understanding about those uh, strongly interacting uh, theory. Okay, so here's uh, my collaborators. Um, first is Mike Hermley from CU Boulder, also Gang Chen uh, from Hong Kong University. And Kai Xing Wu and, uh, is a student of Professor Inge Gao from uh, National Taiwan University. Now he's uh, moving to Boston University. And the badges is a uh, uh, lattice gauge theory uh, 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 expert I, I met in uh, PKS. Now he's in DAISY. And Marcus Ohio is the uh, group leader at uh, PKS, where I collaborate closely uh, uh, when I was in uh, PKS. Okay, so now let's start uh, from the understanding of different phases of matter. As a condensed matter theorist, we try to understand various different kind of uh, phases. For example, liquid crystal, superconductivity, semiconductor, and, uh, and the fractional quantum uh, hall effects. And also recently, uh, people uh, start to get interested in uh, different kind of uh, uh, insulator, for example, topological insulator and um, other kind of uh, um, notion that related to non-trivial topology of the band structure. So one question is like uh, how to understand uh, this kind of uh, different phases of matter in a uh, broad framework. And it turns out that um, uh, one of the uh, guiding principle is uh, uh, Ginsberg-Landau theory, where um, in Ginsberg-Landau theory, we kind of make assumption that um, different order are de described by some kind of local order parameter. And using the symmetry of those local order parameters, we can understand different phases of matter. For example, solids and the uh, liquid phase, uh, solid and liquid phase, and the gas phase of water. And this framework is actually very successful, and it is used widely uh, in uh, not only classical system, but also in certain uh, quantum system. 
So one of the question is like how to go beyond uh, Ginsburg -Land uh, Landau paradigm, and uh, we'll try to uh, later. I'll try to describe how entanglement and topological order uh, came in uh, to uh, try to uh, to break this notion. And the uh, second part, I'll try to discuss a little bit about like. Uh, the, another way to go beyond Ginsburg Landau is basically enter the uh, non equilibrium uh, regime where we study the quantum quenches of this system. And uh, hopefully, I'll be able to like, uh, convey the idea that actually constraints in these uh, models are very important to reach those non trivial uh, entanglement patterns. So, uh, so, let's start from the, a little bit history. So, what do I mean by this like, uh, existence of uh, local? Uh, parameter, uh, a local order parameter. So basically, let's start from something very simple, for example, like magnetic system. And basically, it's the simplest non trivial unit of, uh, in a quantum system because it's a, a two level system and it has up and down. So, when we, uh, 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 the f uh, for this kind of inter uh, spin system, when you start to interact, it can uh, get into a phase transition and get, uh, get inside the ferromagnetic order. And this ferromagnetic order is observed a very long time ago, like maybe 500 BC. And this ferromagnetic order can be understood as like you align all the uh, spins in the uh, same direction. And that uh, order is what uh, people use, uh, is the order parameter to characterize this ferromagnetic order. However, uh, after the discovery of uh, ferromagnetic order, there's another interesting, uh, non trivial but interesting pattern is this anti ferromagnetic order. It is di discovered until very lately, until like 1949. So one is one of the interesting questions is like why, what why it takes so long uh, between uh, people's uh, be, uh, between those two discovery, and it turns out that uh, because like a first like uh, going from uh, this notion to this anti-ferromagnetic notion, you are studying a different kind of Hamiltonian where this J is uh, positive. That means like those spins want to like. Uh, uh, arrange themselves in the anti-paramagnetic way. However, in order to do that, there are two kinds of uh, trial wave function that people proposed. One is the uh, nail, which is this anti-paramagnetic order uh, wave function. And the other is uh, Landau. He proposed that um, this uh, concept has some problem because this state is actually not a ground state, not even an eigenstate of this particular Hamiltonian. So he proposed that maybe what one should think about is some kind of synchronous formed by this uh, uh, Heisenberg spins. And this is basically a debate between theorists, but the, the reason that it is really nailed down is because of the discovery of neutron scattering. And uh, using neutron, one can uh, see that uh, when you lower the temperature, the order can uh, go, the, the magnetic system can go, get into this order phase by uh, introducing some additional black peaks. So uh, this, uh, until that experiment, that people really have an experiment and confirmation that this kind of uh, arrangement of order exists. So what we learn from the here is that actually, um, um, when, when we don't have experiment yet, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Maybe it exists, but we just need the right tool to probe it. And the second is that um, uh, this is kind of like uh, the notion uh, of the current stage of quantum computer. We haven't complete, uh, complete yet, uh, really achieved it, but once we achieve it, maybe it will be something profound and have a dramatic influence in the future. Okay, so now we, uh, the, this uh, anti-ferromagnetic order can all, still also be described by uh, the uh, Ginsburg-Landau paradigm. So how to get beyond that? And here is like a, one of the notion uh, uh, to go beyond uh, uh, Ginsburg-Landau theory is through the topological phase transition. And this is uh, the award that is um, uh, uh, the no Nobel Physics Prize at 2016. So basically, it is awarded to Costa de Salas and uh, Professor Duncan Hoden. And uh, the first is like uh, from the KT transition, the reason that they are able to uh, use uh, the notion of vortex to go beyond Ginsburg Landau is because now the, the important ingredient is those vortex, which is a topological object that cannot be described by low code or the parameter. And um, the second thing that um, uh, a second route is that uh, by Professor Duncan Hoden's uh, discovery of this Hoden phase is basically um, he noticed that um, in the 1D spin chain, actually you can have non-trivial uh, quantum entanglement pattern, which you, uh, this notion uses the fact that quantum entanglement is basically a non-local non object. So you can form 
uh, this kind of uh, singlet and uh, another kind of like a non-trivial superposition of those singlet, and that wave function is very is um, uh, sharply different with the usual product state. So uh, that's another route to, to go beyond Ginsburg Landau paradigm. However, this system is in 1D, so the entanglement pattern is uh, relatively um, restricted. So in principle, if we try to extend this notion that entanglement pattern can be different in one dimension, then in, uh, we can also have some more complicated entanglement, uh, entangled many-body wave function that's formed, for example, by this kind of wave function. Suppose we use this red, red oval as a two-side singlet, and we try to pad this two-side singlet on the lattice, and, we try, and after we pad each covering, we try to make a superposition of this kind of different covering, then we got a many-body wave function that um, is highly entangled. So one question is that if you have this kind of wave function, how to understand then whether those wave functions is adiabatically connected to products, they actually is a highly non-trivial question. But the important notion is that this type of wave function, if you try to use any uh, local uh, observable and try to is evaluate the local observable's uh, expectation value, you will always be zero. So you would have no uh, symmetry breaking, but you still have some non-trivial entanglement pattern inside. So why it is important, and it turns out that this, uh, uh, this type of wave function is, uh, is a, a, a prototype of wave function for the modern understanding of quantum spin liquids. So Basically, uh, we are trying to say that, okay, so we are trying to have a quantum system that basically have no classical order. So then one question is, okay, so there's no cl classical order, so what's the point? What, why do we want to understand this kind of wave function? Why is this useful and why it change our understanding? And uh, so some, at some point people think about, oh, maybe it is just a kind of like a Zen type of philosophy that we are trying to study nothing and nothing is useful. But uh, in fact, um, here is kind of important to uh, distinguish two different notions. Like when we have a disorder system, uh, you can have a classical case or the quantum case. For example, in the classical case, if you have different kind of configuration and you have an equal probability of, uh, distribution of different kind of configuration, when you e evaluate the local order parameter, you will be zero, that's of course. But um, for these two, uh, for different like uh, configuration, there's no quantum coherence. So it's just a classical paramagnetic that's kind of boring. But in the quantum case, you are allowed to make superposition. And this different phase factor will uh, change the property of the wave function such that maybe it can be connected to product state or maybe it cannot. So that's uh, why uh, this, uh, question, uh, this, kind, uh, this kind of notion came into the study of phase of matter relatively late until maybe 1990s starting. And now it's like a more and more useful information is provided. Okay, so that's like a two different uh, notion of quantum spin liquid. One is like a, from the classical point of view, that traditional definition of this spin liquid is basically there's nothing, no order. And in the more, more modern uh, concept that people try to characterize this like a um, uh, disorder, the phase, according to their uh, entanglement pattern. So at this point, it sounds like very uh, ambitious. Like we are trying to say that, oh, we basically want to study a many-body wave function, then how can you make any progress? It seems like it's just super challenging. And it turns out that uh, in the past 10 years, people found that uh, whether the many-body system have a, has a gap or not, uh, turns out to be a very useful notion to classify those on the, uh, different uh, phases of matter. And it turns out that when there's a gap, we can actually did, uh, say more, uh, more things. When the system is still gapless, it turns out that the entanglement pattern is still very really difficult and challenging to analyze. So for those gap quantum phases of matter, um, one can think of like a two kind of a prototype. One is this product state, which is easy to understand. You just have a bunch of atoms and you just put them in some kind of array, and if are, there's no interacting or interacting is irrelevant, then you will have a product state wave function. And another type of wave function is what people call topological order. It's a little bit uh, different with that, and one example is that the torical model. If we try to solve the torical ground state, it turns out that you will be a superposition of different kind of loop covering. And here, the thin line means like a sigma x is a plus one, and thick line is like a sigma x is minus one. And this kind of ground state have a, a it's topological ground state degeneracy and have non-trivial uh, fractionalized excitation. But the important thing is that uh, this wave function 
is different with this kind of product state wave function only when you restrict certain condition. So what is the condition? The condition is that you, you want to have this gap, many body uh, energy gap remain open all the time. And the reason that uh, you need that is because if it is formed by this closed loop, those excitations like EM basically are uh, uh, many body states that break this like a closed loop con condition. So you will have open ends. And those open ends will give you degrees of freedom to unentangle your like a, a loop covering states such that you are able to find a way to uh, go from, de deform your wave function from this state to the product state without uh, closing the gap. So, uh, so in fact, the, the, what I'm trying to say is that in order to, to deform this kind of wave function to a product state wave function, you need to bring those uh, high up excited states with open loops down to the ground state energy, which effectively uh, uh, close the many body gap, and it is not allowed. So because of the gap is need to um, remain open all the time, these two states now belong to different uh, classes. So, okay, so now it seems like it is a very rough um, a category. So what happens if we try to add symmetry to restrict what kind of deformation that we are allowed to do on top of this wave function? And it turns out that if we have more symmetry restriction, like um, then um, th this uh, class of wave function will be uh, further divided into the finer classes. And those finer classes, which um, without symmetry restriction, if they are able to connect to product state, that's what people call symmetry protected topological phases, or sometimes call symmetry protect trivial phase, because you need symmetry to restrict the deformation of your many body wave function. And the second type of uh, second type of uh, phases are those symmetry enriched the topological order. Uh, basically, uh, those states that uh, when there's no symmetry, they connect to this topological order state. And if you have symmetry, they are classified into other finer states of matter. So examples like uh, the previous mentioned, the Hodem phase actually belongs to this like uh, symmetry protected topological phases category. And the symmetry that protect Hodem phase are the um, SU2 symmetry and uh, uh, or the space uh, inversion symmetry or the time reversal symmetry. Any one of these three symmetry, if it is allowed, then uh, the Hodem phase is distinct with the usual product states. And um, other examples like uh, in this torical, uh, like in this topological order include the torical model, fractional quantum hole, and quantum spin liquids. So also here, I want to emphasize that this kind of uh, states is special in the sense that you have superposition of states uh, of, uh, that uh, satisfy certain type of local constraints. And because of those local constraints, such state is not able to you know, unwind itself into a product state. That makes it uh, very different with other quantum antibody systems. Okay, so now back to uh, the question. So, okay, so this notion is kind of uh, useful in, uh, to think about this kind of many body wave function, but the question is like, how, how about experiments? It seems like it's very challenging to realize a torical model. So, um, in the 1D case, uh, it, there are some uh, achievements that's done uh, previously, but for the 2D and 3D, 3D where um, entanglement pattern can be more complicated, it's actually an active research frontier right now. And those systems include um, like a Herbert Smith site, which is a two-dimensional Kagome lattice, and also some organic materials like triangular organic materials frustrated also. And there they are like, uh, in addition to the spin exchange, they have very strong charge uh, fluctuation because those uh, uh, interesting phase uh, also can appear nearby some much transition. And in addition to that, there are also some other very uh, popular material like a KTF uh, type model, like a ruthenium chlorides. And today I'm going to talk, mo mostly talk about three-dimensional system, which is a pyrochlor lattice, um, where people uh, propose that you can realize a very interesting state, which is called quantum spin ice. And why this mod uh, model is particularly interesting is because first it's in 3D. There are very few examples for this kind of physics to appear in 3D. And the second is that um, there's a very special signature. It's basically a low energy. You will see some uh, linear dispersive mode, which is the photon mode. And this photon mode in this frustrated magnet actually um, is similar to the photon modes that appear in the uh, three-dimensional three QED. So, um, so one of the I'll introduce this model and um, for, uh, say more about like our proposal, like how to realize it. <laughs> 
So, okay, so uh, basically, um, that's basically what I'm going to talk about. First, I'll talk about uh, the, one of the works that is basically proposed uh, in this strong spin orbit couple material to realize this quantum spin nice physics. And the second part is I will mention a, a, a little bit about like how to use some uh, this kind of interesting entanglement pattern to uh, have some probing to understand the entanglement pattern. And the last part I'll talk about some physics beyond equilibrium. So here's the three-dimensional system and basically it's formed by a uh, XXZ model on the pyrochore lattice, and pyrochore lattice is formed by this corner shear tetrahedral, uh, like I draw here. And um, the Hamptonian XXZ can be written out in two parts. One is the ice part, which is the usual icing model part. And here, um, this icing model can be uh, rewrite as this kind of uh, expression, where in order to minimize this uh, energy, we want to have a total uh, SZ in a single tetrahedral sum up to zero. So, um, um, so in order to do that, you have like a four size for a single tetrahedral. In order to, for this sum to be zero, you can choose any two of the spins to point in inwards and any other two of them pointing outwards. So there will be six choose, uh, uh, four choose two configuration. That's this six configuration. So why it is called spin ice is because like this two in two out configuration actually mimics the a structure of water ice where the protons is sit sitting nearby uh, the uh, oxygens for two of the oxygen and further away from the other two oxygen. So the electric dipole is formed in this two in two out form. But uh, in, the, in the magnetic system, this electric dipole is replaced by magnetic dipole. So once we have this uh, ice in term, we know that the ground state is a many body uh, degenerate state with two in two out configuration. So they are a microscopic many of them. So once we turn on the quantum fluctuation, which is induced by this um, uh, spin fluctu uh, S plus S minus term, which is the uh, 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 spin interaction that preserves the global U1 symmetry. And you can use this uh, uh, quantum fluctuation and treat it as a perturbation to hybridize those different kind of classical water ice configuration. And once you do that, it turns out that the effective theory uh, after a third order de degenerate perturbation theory, it will look like this. It's basically a ring exchange Hamilton, uh, Hamiltonian around a, a hexagon. So what it looks like is that if you have a certain type of spin orientation like this one, um, it might have a loop orientation like this. And this ring exchange will do is like to flip this loop orientation back. So why this term is interesting is because this term basically uh, preserves the local U1 symmetry. What do I mean by that? Is that if you choose four spin in a sing single tetrahedral locally and use this single tetrahedral and rotate those four spin in a, uh, using a phase factor phi, you'll find that you can rotate those four spins and other four spins independently without changing the uh, form of this Hamptonian. That is like, at the beginning you have a global U1 symmetry, but once you do this degenerate perturbation theory, it turns out that your symmetry is uh, now promoted to local symmetry. So that's how that going from this uh, lattice model in the solid state, it turns out that it's possible to have a theory, a low energy theory with this U1 gauge structure. And it turns out that this U1 gauge structure uh, will lead us to the uh, low energy effective theory, which is described as very similar to a QED uh, physics. And this term, if, uh, if you are familiar with lattice gauge theory, like this six, ring, six spin ring exchange term, it actually spunked into this cosine uh, crop A term. So if you uh, uh, do a usual uh, expansion for this cosine in the deconfined phase, then you will have a, a B square term, and then combined with the E square term, which come from the icing spin, you will have a E square plus B square type of photon mode at low energy. So, okay, so now it seems like it is a, a effective theory description, and it turns out that after numerical like quantum Monte Carlo simulation for, the, uh, for this model, because this model doesn't have sign problem, one can see the low energy disper uh, linear dispersion uh, photon mode. So, okay, so now it's like a, uh, what we know from this like a qu uh, quantum spin uh, from this model. So one of the key questions is like how to realize it. And it turns out that 
in the real material, like this pyro core, it's a really complicated structure. So um, in principle, for those magnetic ion, you, you will have like at the atomic limit, you will have some kind of uh, electronic configuration. And once you turn on spin orbit coupling, those like uh, orbital and spin now start to hybridize with each other. So we'll, they will split in di into different states labeled by the total angular momentum. So if you consider the full space group then and the crystalline environment, those J's will further split into different kinds of uh, atomic wave function. So uh, in certain materials, that uh, uh, if the electron number on the magnetic uh, ion is odd, then you will have Kramer theorem, then you will have, all, uh, because the symmetry is so low, eventually you will have only like Kramer's doublets left. So one of the questions is like, uh, what's the effective theory to describe those effective doublets? It's like a local two-level system. And it turns out that there are um, very, uh, various different kind of transformation law that it need to satisfy. So uh, for those doublets, it can act like a usual di dipolar doublets, where uh, what I mean by dipolar is that those, the pseudospin formed by these doublets transform like a usual dipole moment. And we propose another kind of doublets that Basically, the pseudospin can transform in a very interesting way. That is, uh, the pseudospin is formed by a mixture of dipole component and octopolar component. So, okay, so I'll uh, basically skip that. I'll just uh, uh, describe what's the uh, most general symmetry allowed term when it is considered as a dipole moment. And when it is a, a dipolar doublet, that's the Hamiltonian that looks like it's really basically complicated. So, um, so there are several ingredients uh, that we need to know. First, that is that there are several non-trivial phase factors. It's due to the space group symmetry of this material. And that actually uh, will cause sign problem for beating the uh, unbiased quantum Monte Carlo simulation because it's very complicated. And uh, the second thing is that it seems like a spin orbit coupling make the whole story horrible because it seems like now microscopic spin can see the uh, lattice structure and uh, all kinds of in coupling uh, came into play. So one question is, are there other ways to re reach that? So our contribution is basically we discovered this dipolar to polar doublets in a specific uh, Kramer's doublets, which transform like uh, two different one-dimensional irreducible representation, but they are still Kramer's doublets. And it turns out if you do the symmetry analyze carefully on this pyrochore, it turns out to be a Heisenberg model like, uh, almost like a Heisenberg model, sorry. It's an XYZ model. Why it is XYZ is because the exchange JX, JY, and JZ are uh, basically uh, can be different by symmetry. And uh, important thing is that there's no, this, uh, no phase factor kick in. So this model can actually have a huge parameter space that can be simulated by uh, quantum Monte Carlo. And there's no bound dependence. So. Um, we, uh, we did a uh, mean field theory to study uh, this model by uh, mapping it to the uh, uh, U1 gauge theory, but um, I, I probably will skip all the, um, the detail of that. What we found is that it will have a uh, parameter region which support this quantum spin ice, and because of the um, permutation symmetry of the XYZ model, the phase diagram actually is similar on three different cuts. And um, in addition to the quantum spin liquid, we also found some interesting order, like uh, some octopolar order in this material, which um, is also like uh, being investigated right now. So, okay, so now there are several groups that try to synthetic this type of material, and some of them report um, very interesting signals about the spin liquid phenomena. So, okay, so how it is, uh, this is like a solid state uh, material. The advantage of solid state material is that it can reach thermodynamic large limit. But unfortunately, as we mentioned, it is a symmetry analyzer. We cannot control the uh, exchange parameter. So for this neodymium, the exchange is actually sitting at the wrong parameter region that you won't support this exotic phase. So one question is whether uh, one can control those exchange in a better way such that can reach the uh, interesting phase that we want to study. And it turns out that um, there are a proposal after our uh, work that actually in the ripple atom, this kind of X, Y, Z interaction is able to be uh, uh, manipulated at atomic level. And also like in, uh, recently, like uh, after I uh, came to a conference, I noticed that actually the technique of article lattice have advanced significantly in the uh, last few years. 
and even one can build something like Eiffel Tower, like a geometry. So maybe it is also possible to build uh, this kind of particle network and try to load these XYZ models into this particle and see whether interesting phenomena can be observed. So, okay, so that's like the first part. And let me check with time. Uh, Mr. T. Okay, so I think I will just very briefly talk about the uh, the concept of this symmetry entanglement pattern, and I will try to switch to the um, quench dynamics part. So, as I mentioned, that uh, for a specific type of wave function, it can be described by this loop covering. So, but I didn't assign any property of those closed loops and how they transform on the specific symmetry. So, uh, we we have studied a, an interesting model in this uh, paper that uh, we as uh, through some uh, through spin orbit coupling, now spin can notice the lattice structure. So those loops now can transform in a different way under the space group symmetry and the uh, onside symmetry, which is the Z2 symmetry. And it turns out that um, one can use some interesting non-local classical defect to detect partial information of the loop. Uh, of the entanglement pattern. So how does that work? It's basically if we consider this loop, like for example, uh, for this uh, square lattice, like we have, uh, it's a bipartite lattice, so all the closed loop must of be of uh, even length. So if every link under the Z2 transformation is odd, then all the closed loop will transform uh, evenly uh, in uh, usual uh, square lattice. However, if you introduce this kind of discarnation, which is basically uh, you, you cut a piece of, uh, 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 of your lattice that is related by C4 symmetry and try to glue it back. So basically, you identify this point and this point and this point and this point, and in the middle, everything is uh, dropped out. Then you will have this kind of triangular loop. So by introducing this uh, discarnation, you will kind uh, you will. Uh, uh, you'll be able to tell two different kind of structure. One is that th for those loops that transform uh, even uh, as even under the uh, Z2 symmetry or it's odd under Z2 symmetry. If it is odd under Z2 symmetry, those loops will be forbidden. So the physical implication is that you will lead to some zero energy mode that's attached nearby this discarnation. And that will be an uh, interesting uh, thing for experimentalists to, to to tell numerical physics to simulate whether this kind of Vizong zero mode exists. Okay, so now I will try to switch to uh, the last part of my talk about the non-equivalent study. So basically, uh, in the past few years, there are uh, various interesting uh, advances in the coatent society, so that makes us feel very exciting to study the non-equivalent perspective of these lattice gauge theories. For example, the first is that um, there's a realization by the group in uh, Innsbruck, I think, that um, they are able to realize uh, 1D fermions that are minimally coupled to a U1 uh, gauge field. And the second and third paper basically is an exciting development that uh, people are now trying to study uh, co coherent quantum anybody uh, dynamics in f f 51 or 53 qubits. And the last part is basically a phenomenon that uh, is called the quant dynamical quantum phase transition is observed in the, also I think in the Innsbruck, I, I believe, uh, in the trap ion physics. So uh, what kind of, uh, uh, so uh, before I get to like what we study, let me try to describe what kind of phenomena, non-equivalent phenomena we try to study. It's basically this like a quench dynamics. So the idea is that we, we try to start to prepare our initial uh, wave function by some uh, uh, Hamptonian that's well known. So maybe we'll prepare the initial state by some product states. And at some point, uh, we turn on the quench basically is that we change the parameter in our Hamptonian or, uh, in a sudden way such that now this state is no longer an uh, eigenstate so you will start to uh, evolve according to what kind of Hamptonian uh, you choose. So um, one question to study uh, this kind of phenomena is that how uh, basically this kind of uh, uh, process is actually very you know, like uh, all kinds of things can happen. You basically use the unitary transformation to transform your wave function. So what you can say, uh, are there general things that you can say about this um, to analyze this wave function? So one, one thing is trying to make the formal analogy between the equilibrium partition function and uh, this evolution operator. And it turns out that um, if uh, you try to calculate the 
evolution operator of this unitary evolution using the prepared the initial state, it actually have this form, which is very much similar to a equilibrium partition function. So, um, and this uh, object actually is known as the Loshmi echo. It also uh, tells us like what's the return probability of a specific uh, time evolved wave function to its initial uh, state. So um, this quantity, uh, even, even though it's just a single component in the um, unitary evolution, but it still contains some interesting information for us to study. So uh, as I mentioned, it can be uh, formally mapped to some kind of partition function. So in the phase notion of phase transition, um, one can uh, use partition function and analyze the zeros of those partition function to identify phase transition. And from those points, uh, people can develop a different concepts such as university class and uh, um, RG type of analysis for this kind of phase transition. So uh, in analogy, uh, if we try to st uh, use this um, Loshmi echo and try to study uh, this kind of, uh, in this, uh, from this perspective, we are actually studying the rate function of this uh, uh, Loshmi echo. So, this, and it turns out that this rate function co can also have some non analyticity as uh, studied by um, Max Hayo and uh, collaborators in 2013. So, uh, one question is that uh, whether we can, uh, also, like, uh, there are s several related works along this line, um, but, um, one of the questions is that um, the study of this dynamical quantum phase transition focus uh, mostly on 1D system. One question that is not yet answered is that whether we can observe this kind of dynamical quantum phase transition in a constraint system like a lattice gauge theory in 1D or even 2D. <laughs> so, okay, so now it's like the connection to the previous 3D paracord because in principle, like a, um, I w it will be very exciting for me if we can start this kind of dynamical quantum phase transition in a 3D particle. Unfortunately, it's a really complicated lattice. So we try to like uh, downgrade the problem to a manageable level. So if you try to look at this particle from the Z direction, it actually gives you a projection like this kind of square lattice. And this kind of square lattice actually can give you some um, 2D ice, um, ice type of wave, wave function, which is very similar to the to the Tori code that I just de described. And also, like one can even further simplify the lattice structure from these 2D eyes into one dimension. However, in one dimension, um, the dynamics is, if there's no matter field, the dynamics is just too trivial, so one need to in introduce a matter field to have non-trivial uh, dynamics. So, um, so that's where uh, this notion of uh, quantum link models kicks in. Because in the previous uh, discussion, we just used like you just uh, like spin one half spins on this particle lattice, and it turns out that um, there's a more general framework that you can use a finite uh, dimensional Hilbert space uh, and try to uh, construct uh, lattice gauge theories from those finite dimensional Hilbert space. That's what uh, achieved by uh, these gentlemen uh, in the early 90s, and uh, recently there's a nice review by Professor Uwe Weiss. And um, I probably will skip uh, the details of that, and basically I'll just jump into the uh, model that we study. First is like the one-dimensional um, fermion hopping in a lattice, minimum coupled to a U1 gauge field, and this U is now um, the, uh, plays the role of a gauge field. It is uh, in the experiment, it will be uh, uh, realized by a spin one half spins, or like a spin one spins, it depends on what kind of uh, a quantum link you want to put. And uh, uh, another model we study is this two, dim two plus one D uh, quantum link model without meta field. So there's only gauge degrees of freedom. And um, those two terms are the simplest and non trivial uh, terms that can have some uh, interesting effect. So we, uh, we, we will try to study the, um, this Hampton the quench dynamics after we all of a sudden change the V. And here is that we will ch uh, change the. Um, uh, the, math, uh, the 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 hopping term. So, uh, okay. So, uh, what we did is actually uh, first, like, uh, studied. Uh, we we studied the ground state of this quantum link model at the limit where k equal to zero. That's basically we turn off the hopping, and when we turn off the hopping, then the uh, uh, system is like uh, formed by uh, anti-ferromagnetic order on the matter field side. 
And for once the meta field site is fixed, actually there are two fold degeneracy for, uh, to assign the gauge configuration because uh, you need to satisfy the Gauss law. So either the gauge field is all polarized in one direction or the opposite direction. So we start from one of the initial condition and try to like turn on kappa and see how this uh, wave function evolve as a function of time. And use that, we calculate the logarithmic echo and see whether we can observe the um, dynamic signal for dynamical quantum phase transition. And it turns out that, yes, we do found that within the time, uh, relative short time scale. And unfortunately, um, we used uh, the TBD method where the entanglement will uh, build up very quickly. So the method will become like a very, uh, will compute, the computation time will cost very long after uh, certain time steps. Uh, but luckily, we are able to see certain kind of non-elasticity non in the uh, Loshmi echo. And it turns out that the meaning of this uh, Loshmi echo is uh, also have an intuitive understanding. It's basically when you go from vacuum and you, after you quench it, you will start to have process that um, you try to create particle and antiparticle, and those strains will like uh, start to develop. And at the point that, that dynamical quantum phase transition appear is actually is at the point where that you maximize the uh, particle and, and antiparticle pair. And after that, you will st start to uh, recombine and go back to the other ground state. So that's the physical uh, picture that you start from one of the ground state, and after some time evolution, you will go from one lobe of the Hilbert space to the other position of the Hilbert space, which get closer to the other ground state degenerate uh, many body wave function. So let's see. Uh, it's 42, so, uh, so uh, it's almost done. I'll just describe what this Hamptonian looks like. So basically, this is uh, uh, the two-dimensional uh, U1 quantum link model, where uh, in this Hamptonian, it satisfies the gauge, uh, gauge constraint. That means that uh, the uh, wave function that in order to satisfy, satisfy the gauge constraint need to have charge zero configuration. So that's, again, this two in, two out configuration, but now it's map to a two-dimensional lattice. So um, what we did is actually similar to, uh, to the previous case that um, we start from uh, one of the case that v, the V term is infinite, and uh, the two ground states can be right now in these two kind of toy states. It's basically related by uh, you just un, uh, flip all the spins from uh, one configuration to the other. So here you can see that um, it's covered by all kinds of uh, oriented loops. And uh, we uh, start him from one of the ground state, and we st all, all of a sudden turn off this V, and then the wave function was start to be updated by this like uh, uh, U term. And this U term actually uh, will do is that you will unwind this orientation. For example, this one is counterclockwise, and once you wind it from counterclockwise to clockwise, you will create four different unflippable loops. So this dynamics is kind of complicated. Once it, you flip one, and you will create other unflippable brackets. So the question is how this wave function evolve. So um, we, uh, we developed some kind of exact organization uh, using Lenchel's method to study the evolution of this 2D U1 quantum link model. And uh, it, um, um, yeah, that, those are just technical details. And it turns out that uh, we also can see this signal of dynamical quantum phase transition. And the physical meaning of this, uh, uh, and also we identify the order, uh, related oscillation of order parameter for this wave function. And the physical meaning of this uh, uh, MB or MA is basically the entanglement strength between the AB sub lattice. So you will go from like, uh, initially it's like a prefer from minus 0.5 and then later you will cross zero and go from one wave function to prefer the, another wave function. And the reason for that is because the, in the equilibrium phase transition, uh, we actually start from one of the ground state and after you, we quench it to zero, you actually enter another ground state. So it's kind of choosing the energy, um, energetic favor path to go from one order to the other. So, um, so, uh, so this, like, uh, this dynamical quantum phase transition is actually so closely related to the equilibrium or uh, order parameter dynamics. Okay, so here's my quick summary. So basically I talk about some of the constraint uh, models in 3D, where in equilibrium we can see it as an interesting realization for this um, emergent uh, U1 gauge theory in 3D. 
And in the second part, I'll try to discuss more about the uh, quench evolution for this kind of uh, um, model, with, uh, which is the quantum link model with similar structure. And we found that in short time, there are uh, signals for dynamical quantum phase transition, which tells us like how those uh, special initial states evolve in, uh, in, in the Hilbert space as a function of time. Um, so in the future, we would like to study more other related phenomena related to this constraint dynamics. Also, like long time dynamics for this system is also very challenging, and it is where um, the study using quantum computer, like an analogy quantum computer or like a synthetic quantum matter is going to be very useful for us. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, yes, yes. Yes. Um, but actually, in your time, in quantum niche models, uh, are you saying then like, you know, they are uh, to study like information theories, uh, so something, and then I can imagine which physics they correspond. Yes. Like Hutton physics, uh, and so on. Now, uh, it's hard for me to imagine which physics are supposed to be uh, uh, correspond to your quantum. Like, you take a quark uh, and a oh. quark and, uh, and you pick it, or, I mean, that, that's what I mean. Ah. In the one thing you. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So I, I think um, uh, to some extent, this quench is more like uh, uh, all, all of a sudden you, uh, you. To some extent, in this Hamptonian, there's only one dimensionless parameter. It's basically the kappa over m. So to some extent, you can think of it as like you start from very heavy uh, matter field, and you, you have some gauge uh, field in, in your theory, and you have a very heavy, uh, uh, heavy mass for the matter field, and all of a sudden, you start to like uh, close it. So you can like uh, create particle and have particle easily. Then the, oh, you mean in... in, in Oh, yeah, that, that's something that's beyond the usual high energy, from high energy perspective, you probably cannot do that. But in the uh, synthetic quantum matter, you, uh, this is just one tuning parameter that you can uh, play okay, with. So yes. Kind of, uh, so it's uh, synthetic quantum matter, mm -hmm. but it is not really, no longer... Uh, Directly related to uh, the... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, there are two things. One is that if something happened in uh, uh, real high energy physics and they have difficulty to realize certain experiments, then co-atom can do something to overcome that. That's one thing. For example, another interesting thing that this model can study is by, uh, what's it called? Uh, Schringer mechanism, that you can apply an electric field and then you will start to create particle, yeah. Yeah, that's basically very, to some extent, this is like a one of the parameter region that when you accelerate, like if you have a apply E field, that you are able to, you know, like overcome the mass gap more easily. So you can create those things out of vacuum. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that. <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah, I'm sad to hear the side. Yes. Yeah, but I agree that would be very interesting, but I think it would be very challenging from high energy perspective because you probably need to have gigantic E field and because, you know, fine structure constant is small, so you, you know, to fight with it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes.